Hello, everyone, and happy Friday to you. And in some parts of the world, happy Saturday to you. I hope that you're having an amazing day today. Today, we are having a late night chat. I hope you guys are excited about that. I want to welcome you to the Anyone Can Write podcast show, the Adult Play Therapy podcast show, and I hope that you are ready for what we have today. You are in for a treat. Hello, Coach Play. That's my husband, Coach Play with an I and not a Y. Hello, Barbie. How are you doing? That is my guest who is going to be here today. That is Barbie. Now tell me if I'm saying this right. Boulevard Day. I hope I'm saying it right, who is joining us today. And I'm a complete fangirl of her page. And I'm sure that you are too. And if you have not joined her page, when you get on there, you are going to become an instant follower, just like that, an instant follower. You're going to look on there, see a couple of photos, and before you know it, you're going to hit that follow button. Hi, behind life and Daldum. How are you? Oh, uh, well, thank you, handsome. He said, hello, beautiful. So without further ado, I am going to call our guest. Let's see here. To. I'm hoping so. There we go. Invite has been sent. Hello, the dog Grove. Thank you so much for joining. Hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> I'm good. How are you? Doing good. <laughs> so good to see you. So I good to been, see you too. I have been such a fan of your page for so long. Oh, thanks. So the feeling is mutual. So I think I think you found me and then I found you. So. I did. I did. I was like, oh, wow. Like, I love, uh, you know, just your, well, well, we'll get into that. But I love all the different directions that you take with your page because you have so many different um, elements mm -hmm. in your page. It fascinates me. So I want to first off, thank you for spending this time with me. You are in Sydney, Australia. So it is currently Saturday. Yes. In the afternoon. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, um, it's, it's pretty wild. Yeah, we're in the future. So. <laughs> it's amazing. We have to get these times coordinated because mm -hmm. you're 19 hours ahead of LA, but I'm in yeah. Kentucky, so it's like 16 oh. hours of a difference. Wow. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. That's but I want to thank you. I know. Yeah. And someone said time travel Barbie. <laughs> <laughs> so true. So true. It is so true. I thank you for spending this time with me. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me. This is I think this is gonna be really, really fun. Oh, so I'm I'm yeah. sure it will. I'm sure it will. Yeah. I'm sure it will. So first off, I wanna ask you, what made you get into Barbies? Were you already a, a Barbie girl growing up mm -hmm. or what what I, took I'm, place? I mean, I, I always was like Barbie was my go to as as a child, um, I should probably turn my light up because I feel like the lighting is a bit bigger. Um, <laughs> yay! <laughs> oh, beautiful, there we are. Um, I yeah, I was. I don't know. I don't know. Barbie was always the toy that I gravitated towards. I had a brief flirtation with Thomas the Tank Engine when I was growing up. Yeah. Um, and then I think when I discovered Barbie, it was just yeah, game over for everything else. Um. And, and I loved Barbie for the longest time. And um, I probably, I played with Barbie for longer than I should have. Like I know that I was definitely well into my teens um, and not wanting to give her up, which is kind of feeds into my whole fashion thing. Um, but we can discuss that later. Uh, and then in my twenties, when I was at university, I was like, no, time to be like a cool hot adult. You've got to put that away. And um, so I, yeah, boxed everything up. I gave away a lot of stuff. Um, and then in 2009 was when the My Favourite Barbie reproduction came out and I'd always wanted Barbie and the Rockers as a child and I never had them. And they had the reproduction of the first 1985 Barbie and the Rockers, which was not the one that I wanted. I always wanted the second wave with the straight hair. Yeah. Um, but I was like, oh, I was like, this is you know what, just, just get this one, you know, this will heal that hurt that you didn't have. And I was, I was fine with her for a while. I was fine with her for a long time, actually. Um, and then when I turned 30, I was like, what am I doing? You know, like, I still want these things. So I was like, okay, well, I'll just get Bobby and the Rockers and Friends wave one and two, and that will be my collection. Okay. And then I was like, oh, but you also really like the sensations as well. So, okay, well, let's just get them. 
Um, and then I, so I was like, okay, well, if, if I only collect music themed Barbie from 1985 to 1992 before the logo changed, then that's manageable. That's fine. Um, I know, right? Yeah. So it just, it just kind of like sky, sky, it just, yeah, rolled from, from there. Um, yeah. And then, then it wasn't, it wasn't until, I mean, I mean it, it, everything's so intertwined. I don't know if I'm making any sense, but um, oh, for fine. the longest time, for the longest time, my friends were telling me that I needed to do something creative and, you know, maybe it was like start a blog or do some fashion illustration or, you know, and post that to Instagram. And then um, I was following oh, that eighties boy for the longest yeah. time and being like, oh my gosh, he's just like reached into my brain and he's extracted all of the things and, I, you know, and he was doing it so well and he still does it so well. So if you're not following Beta, um, you need to follow him. <laughs> um, he, yeah, so he, he kind of inspired me. And then in 2019, I changed jobs at the end of the year and I was like, you know what, I'm going to give a Barbie Instagram ago and it was gonna oh, be wow. yeah it was it was gonna be just showcasing fashions and kind of like tying into movies and a little bit of nostalgia and so I bought myself the Barbie Benedict and dolls because I was like all my all my music themed ones pretty much remain in box and they're okay. all behind me um, <laughs> cause I think that they're never going to be any lovelier than where they are right now. And I do have doubles, which are out of box, uh, cause I can't help myself. And yeah, so 2019 rolled around. I decided to start my Barbie Instagram account and I did, um, it took me all of 2019 to, and well, the idea came in 2019 and I was like, by October 31st, 2020, if you haven't mm -hmm. posted, like, if you haven't posted one thing, then, you know, like, that's your deadline. You have to just, wh wherever you're at, you have to just start posting. And, uh, and so that's what I did. Um, yeah. Wow. And, and, that was, wow. and that was kind of it. And it just kind of sky, it just snowballed. I got, from there. yeah, yeah, I got the, I got the Benetton dolls and then I got really interested in all of the different face sculpts. And I was like, I want my page to be really inclusive and I want people to be able to see themselves um and so you know that's where i started getting like N nichelle and shani and you know different versions of kira and oh, um oh yeah you know and, and i was just like and there are just so many different variations and you don't think that there are in the 80s because the friends were never really the focus but okay. they 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 are there so Me. Okay, there we go. Okay, we had a there small little glitch, but we're back. Yay! <laughs> Yay. But look, you know, those little tiny things, because Barbies are little. We're just talking about like eleven and a half inches. Yeah, and they're little tiny miniature accessories. Mm -hmm. Take up so much room. <laughs> they do take up so much. They <laughs> happen so quickly, oh. and they take up so much space. It yeah. is crazy. But where would we be without them? They they bring such pleasure. Into exactly. <laughs> So Even on the days that I can't had. photograph, if I could just like, <laughs> you know, brush their hair, change yeah. clothes, get an idea in my mind of what my next story is going to be yeah. or my next photos, it just like it helps bring up, you know, just break up the monogamy of the day. And yeah, so I I fully understand how one doll can just it's a, just a rabbit turns into many. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I, so, oh no, no no keep going. I was just going to say I, I was like I don't know about you, but I now find that I'm having to start to be really intentional with what I bring in yes. to my house because there was a time where I was just buying everything. So yes, <laughs> is that the, yes. is that the same, same for you? Yes, yeah. it is. Cause yeah. we have, you know, it's my husband and I, we have 10 kids yeah. and we have a dog mm -hmm. and space is limited. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> space is limited. So I have to be very mindful of what I get. And there are a lot of beautiful dolls out there, but yeah. similar to you, I've like, I've decided what kind of face molds I like the most. Mm -hmm. Uh, if I am going to get a double, it has to be a strong purpose as to why I'm yeah. getting a double. 
you know, yeah. really, really like that one. I'm concerned that, you know, the one that I use the most may mm -hmm. break or something, then I'll get a double. But for the most part, yeah. I, I have to be intentional about what I get because yeah. <laughs> space is limited. <laughs> and I don't want to just have things to, you know, that I'm not mm -hmm. using. Mm -hmm. uh, so I want to be, and I do have a lot of Barbies I'm not using, but... <laughs> Yeah, I don't want to give the same, them same, same as me. I can't. I'm like, but yeah, but she's beautiful, and I she could be they could be a story for her, <laughs> you know, there could be a photo <laughs> shoot around <laughs> her. <so. laughs> Speaking, it's just it's kind of faint, but she's mm -hmm. gonna, you know, <laughs> she just yeah. needs a group of friends. It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. Where did you get your, your name from? And I want to make sure that I'm saying your, mm -hmm. your account name correct, Barbie. Is it Boulevard? Boulevard DA? Yeah, I would say that that's pretty, that's pretty correct. So, um, <laughs> my account name, I, yeah, I wanted something that would grow with me and that wouldn't be prescriptive. So that was, that was the, my initial concept for it. And I was like, and it has to be Barbie and it has to be something. And, um, and I had, at one of my previous roles, I had a friend who was from France and she was so fashionable, so sophisticated, um, and so creative. And I was like, Oh, I kind of want to channel a little bit of Madeline in this. And, uh, and then I don't know, you know, you go down that rabbit hole of, you know, mining your past for ideas. And yes. I remember in art history, talking about um, Paris and the Boulevardiers, um, which was basically a, a slang term for the wealthy, fashionable socialites, you know, that would hang around the boulevards of, of France and, and Paris. And, and I also wanted something that wasn't like distinctly Australian because not that I'm ashamed of my culture. I think that we're really good. Um, but I, I didn't want something that was just going to be, okay, like you're just Southern Hemisphere. I wanted it to be... A, something that kind of translated internationally and Barbie Boulevardia just rolls off the tongue really nicely. And Boulevardia is also a really nice drink. So, <laughs> so it there's, is. Lots of, there's lots of stuff. <laughs> hey, I like uh, a, a Woodford anytime. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorites. I'm sure I've this too, but, mm -hmm. but Woodford's always nice. Yeah. <laughs> well, yes, yes, yes. I love that. Now you did say art history. Yeah. And I'm curious to know what is your past history because we've got fashion going on, Photog yeah. Um, yeah, of course, photography. Um, you're you're doing storyline. I am so curious to know what is your past history as far as being a creative. Um, I always did creative subjects in school. Um, my favorite subjects were art and English and. Um, drama i did drama for a while um and in high school i also did this i did an elective called graphics which is basically it's like baby architecture and i did think that i was going to be an architect for the longest time but then um when my mom growing up my mom had a friend come and stay with us for um, a couple of weeks uh, and she brought along with her a pattern making book and seeing as I was like aging out of Barbie in everyone else's eyes, but my own. Um, and I, I just picked up this book that Iris had and it had, um, had little patterns in them, uh, showing you how to create and how to manipulate and how to fit. And, um, and I was like, Oh, this would be a really interesting way. Like, if I, if I, st if I start playing on the fashion Avenue, because I was really interested in fashion anyway, um, you know, I could, I could play with Barbies for longer being, there you oh, go. I'm going to be a fashion, I'm going to be a fashion designer. So, <laughs> you know, so this is really just <laughs> helping to set me up for my career. There I'm not go. playing. I am working towards something. Um, and so I kind of, started my mom taught me how to sew and i would create my own patterns and we'd buy patterns from the store from um like lincroft which is essentially i think like your joanne's um yes. and yeah and i it just all started from there and i also had like a little business going where i would sell my outfits through one of my aunties she would take them to work like a shoebox full and then come back with a handful of cash 
oh, which yeah. was really nice. Um, but the, getting back to like storytelling and whatnot, it, I keep thinking about this parent teacher meeting that we had when I was probably 15 or 16 and, um, and my art teacher being like, you know, like Brooks, incredible. She's so talented, you know, she's got the illustration skills, but she's also got this love of fashion and, you know, and I can see her working for Vogue or, you know, like going into magazines. Um, and then my English teacher at the time too was like, you know, very creative imagination, um, you know, good, good use of language and, uh, obviously loves reading and, you know, everything that you do is a pleasure to read. Um, you know, but where you really excelled was, you know, when you did this like journalistic thing where you like interviewed and you told a story and, and looking back at that now, I'm like, why didn't I think to go into magazines? <laughs> you know, I could have done that. <laughs> I could have done that instead. Um, but yeah. I could that too. Yeah. I do that too. <laughs> it's just like not really, you know, you're at an age where, where you're still trying to figure out yourself yeah. and That's trying it. to and you don't, you understand why you don't want to be told why, at that age too like, why didn't I, I, like for me, I love dance. So yes. why didn't I do something with dance? Why didn't I get into art more knowing that how much I love Frida and mm. I love this and I love so yeah, it's like you look back and it's almost being on the outside looking in. Yes. <laughs> you see yeah. yourself more fully. And I I, I think you know, to get beyond the regret, we have to really realize that we're still breathing. Cause yeah. I do it too. I, I'm so bad on it. I'm so bad on it. But <laughs> we're like, realize we're still breathing. We still have time to get into it. And you are illustrating that right now with your awesome and amazing account because okay. We are flabbergasted. I know I speak for myself and, of course, uh, your followers, that we are flabbergasted by the work that you do. And when you say that you want to go into architect, that was definitely something I wanted to do now. Now, I am not able to construct what you do with your dioramas because what you construct is amazing. And I do have a question about that. Are you creating standalone dioramas or are in that, that you are taking apart after your series of photos or do you have all these different room boxes and dioramas oh, just kind of like I throughout had, <laughs> I wish I had the room to have them set up but I don't so everything everything that I design folds down or collapses so that way it takes up the least amount of space possible um so like my magical mansion inspired house for the Christmas shoot. Yes. Um, all, all of those walls just, you know, like fold together and, you know, they can be configured in different ways to create different rooms. Um, so it's not one actual big dollhouse, which I, I mean, I would love to have that, but who's got the space. Um, but yeah, but it was just, it's, yeah, it's nice. It was all just, individual walls. Um, and then I think I had like, I've got a standalone kind of plinth for the fireplace, which has the fireplace on one side and it's got the kitchen on the wallpaper on the other side, okay. which, yeah. And being able to be like, okay, well, I have, I have all of these different elements and I find it nice that I can, depending on the day, configure them in a different way and that I'm not constricted to having something set up. Um, Whereas with the uh, Friday the 13th series that I did for Halloween, yes. um, that that was the biggest build I think I've ever done. And it was so stressful. <laughs> it was such a lot of work. I gave myself a month and a month was not long enough to kind of get everything done. Um, but those, again, the cabins sort of do fall down and, but not as as easily because there's textural relief on the outside and they take up a bit more space everything yeah everything does collapse um my trees i think are down beside me down the okay. bottom like they're just empty rolls of fabric that i wrapped some uh a photograph of bark around and then created some little branchy bits and everything i do i feel like is really lo-fi like i don't I don't think that what I do is particularly special. 
Oh, oh, oh. I feel like I feel like anyone any of it. You know, be ha having the humble, <laughs> humble perspective because it is. Yeah, it's phenomenal work that you do. Um, when when it comes to like how you did. I'm hoping we can get all this in in one conversation because I literally yeah. have all kinds of questions written down. But yeah. when it comes to the Friday the 13th mm -hmm. one that you did, one, um, you said it took almost a month to construct. Yeah. I'm also curious in knowing, um, did you use a regular camera? Mm -hmm. Did you use your phone to do that? Because you had so many different um, angles that I, you took. And it was yeah. quite amazing just iphone all of my photos are iphone that's why um when someone uh recently commented being like you should turn this into a book i'm like i can't because the iphone photos won't be a good enough resolution <laughs> for a book um but you still yeah. could do something yeah uh, yeah yeah but, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, every, everything I, everything i do is just yeah is handheld it's it's iphone i have my light set up around me and I kind of work out how to best light something and sometimes that can be really tricky and then yeah and it's just about positioning your I like being able to move my phone and seeing the results in real time I do have I've got a digital camera but it's a Sony cyber shot from the early 2000s you know when we were carrying those around um mm -hmm. and the screen of that's really tiny and then there's the process of having to upload it to a computer and then from the computer upload it to Instagram I like the fact that I can just shoot on my phone and 10 minutes later it can be online I get it it's very, very convenient yeah <laughs> it's convenient you kind of like put it on there and then move on with life uh, yeah. do you use yeah like any anything like pinterest to kind of generate an idea of how you're mm -hmm. going to build it oh wow so yeah. you're just straight up just yeah i i do from, I, from your own inspiration of self i love yeah. that i watch i watch movies if i need a reference point um you know i might google something like uh you know eve saint laurent uh 80s color or something like that and just see what comes up and and kind of pull from those ideas and then I s pull from that and I rarely ever print anything out I have my phone beside me I sketch from that so that way because I feel like if you if you print I feel like if I, if I print something out if I look at it too much it's going to be too much of a literal translation of it and I don't want it to ever impinge on someone else's work i want to try yes. and make sure that there's an element of authenticity to it like there's yes. being inspired by and then there's copying and i never want to be a cop someone who copies so yeah does that i fully help? get that i yeah. fully no 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 no, no. I, I totally get it i totally get it um you know authenticity is so important you know, when we when we talk to our kids about writing their book reports, mm -hmm. we really emphasize making sure it's you know only your work, even if it's research. Yeah. You know, if you're doing a research paper, make sure that it's your voice that's being heard. Go what you need to, but without plagiarism. Um, yeah. And I feel like that's the same way with my own work. You know, when it comes to what I write, when it comes to what we do mm -hmm. in our doll community, making sure that I, I can be inspired mm -hmm. by other creatives, mm -hmm. but making sure that it's authentic to my own sound yeah so i yeah. i fully respect that but you yeah. did say 80s colors and i'm so glad yeah. that you did so we can segue into <laughs> how you are inspired by the 80s what made you choose the 80s era even when i was a little kid in I, even when we were like well into the 90s i was still sad and nostalgic for the 80s <laughs> which is so weird um I think, I mean, like if, if we, if we kind of. I think, well, number one, before you even go on, I want you to know that is not weird. That is not weird. I was not born during the seventies. I was not, yeah. but the seventies mm -hmm. means a whole lot to me. I was like right at the very end of the seventies. I, like, oh, yeah. I, I was like the beginning of the eighties, but I wish mm -hmm. <laughs> I was in the seventies. I love the seventies. I don't care what aspect it is. It can be disco. It can be, um, yeah. um, um, you know, protesting. It could be hippies. Yeah. I love that oh, era. And so everything that much. Yes. So I don't think that's weird at all yeah. to uh, uh -huh. have a certain era that, that you cling to. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know. Like, 
I mean, yeah, I, I don't know how far you want to get into it, but basically I think like if I really kind of like whittle it down to why I'm, why I was obsessed with the eighties or why I was nostalgic for the eighties when, even when I was a kid was, um, when in 1990, um, we moved from Sydney to my hometown and, uh, and I was, I was only eight years old. And I think that that was really traumatic <laughs> for me. Um, and so I think I spent most, of, most of like the early nineties, probably up until like 96 or something, just trying so hard emotionally to get back to this massive life that we had because, you know, we came from a city, we moved to a small town um, and it, it was a complete culture shock. Um, oh. You know, they didn't even have a McDonald's. <laughs> you, know, like, um, you know, they had, they had hungry jacks, which is Burger King basically. And I was like, I was like, you don't have a McDonald's and you know, like, yeah, you only have two TV channels. Like what, what's that about? You don't get neighbors. You don't get the good channels. Um, so, but all of those things eventually came. Um, but I find, I think that that just made me very introverted, um, at that time of my life. So that's kind of, I think and why I look back at the 80s. It's huge when and, you're a kid. And yeah, it was massive. <laughs> <laughs> so I like it. Yeah. And I don't, I don't know. I, I mean, like, I just remember, I remember as a kid going with my mom and my babysitter to the mall and to department stores and, uh, and how exciting the city was and our monorail, which, you know, rest in peace, Sydney monorail. Um, <laughs> you know, it just, everything yeah. was exciting and alive and colorful and neon and, um, the music was great. Uh, you know, the nineties came along and it was a lot of grunge. It was a lot of angst. Um, we have that and yeah, so yeah. I think I just wanted it to be fun, fun and colorful and yeah. John Hughes movie esque. <laughs> yes. Mm. Yeah. See, that's so interesting because our nineties hit very mm. similar that we had grunge. Um, mm. we had goth yeah. and a lot of what, what we, we're kind of yeah. like used to yeah uh during our childhood it, it transformed very quickly yeah. <laughs> so i i fully understand what you mean as far mm -hmm. as wanting to just kind of hold on and, and have that that sacred space for for your night you know for your 80s nostalgia i don't think yeah. anything's wrong with that at all yeah. and i i do believe that that's what sets your account apart from other accounts so when mm -hmm. i see your photos like i know mm -hmm before I even have to read your, the, your, like your name on the account, I know that it's yours because yeah. <laughs> of your style. And I, I believe that that's very unique. And I love, oh yes, you said mm -hmm. 80s movies. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the things that I like commented on. I was like, oh my God, I love that movie. And, and <laughs> just like how you did um, the slumber party and had Christy Sly. Yes. <laughs> oh <laughs> like from the Tom Cruise movie. I was like, oh that my God. <laughs> that came about literally because I think I'd watched Risky Business a few days before Risky and I was like, Oh, this I was like, This is slumber party. <laughs> this is total peak slumber party. <laughs> so <laughs> um, now how do you set up your movie um your movie flyers that you create? Oh the because those are so the amazing. Posters? You re she recreates, yes, the yeah. movie posters. Mm -hmm. And it's so, it's, it's phenomenal. I love it. You have flash, um, dance, yeah. you have the mannequin, mm -hmm. uh, you've had, of course, I, I believe it was risky business. I'm trying to remember off the yeah. top of my head, which I've ones got, I've seen. I've got, I've got so many there actually, I think I've got, I think I've got them down here beside me. Um, so what happens <laughs> when you don't have oh, enough space. Good when you don't have enough space for things so yes yeah, so i've got me too me too if you have not seen those you've got to go check them out yes um we've got beverly hills cop yes yes footloose um i'll try and get like yes a, i agree you can fully sell those you can definitely together. sell those those are amazing like you know it was kind of just like a a best of of you know like Mannequin, wow. pretty woman, yes, dirty pretty dancing. Woman, dirty dancing. 
theater. <laughs> yeah, the New York the best movie. Yeah, these are um, these came about because uh, they released the Barbie Rewind, and she was influenced by Cool Times Barbie, uh, and she was the Kira sculpt, um, and she was going. They gave her popcorn, and she had popcorn earrings, and and I was like, oh, okay, so and three D glasses, so obviously she's going to the movies. So let's take them to the movies. Um, and I was like, well, if I'm going to build a cinema set, I'm going to need posters to go with. And um, yeah, so one one afternoon, um, I kind of just went through my little box of tricks, um, my box of outfits, and pulled things that were similar to what they were wearing in the actual movie posters. And then I just kind of set them up, took the took the photography, put the photographs into Illustrator found fonts that were similar, um, typed out all of the little stuff that goes down the bottom. Um, and yeah, and then that was, that was it. I, yeah, there was a big, there was a big space of where I put them because, and the reason why there was so much time between, I think each movie poster was because I was trying to buy time to finish the set that I was working on. <laughs> so quite, quite How often. How long does it take you with those sets? Uh, Sometimes it can be really quick. Sometimes it can be really difficult. Um, I think with the cinema one, the cinema one took me ages because I was using my old laptop and it kept crashing because the files were so large. Um, and yeah, so that it, it took me, it took me a while and then printing them out and mount, mounting them and, uh, and then edge staining the, side of the foam core board so that way you don't see the white you know be red or whatever color the wall was going to be um and trying to work out how to make it look like the door one of the doors can open but the other one can't and how do i make that work because on one side you've got the exterior of the cinema and then you flip it over and it's the interior so like the entryway yeah. is actually the entry to cinema five, if that makes sense. So, yeah. So I don't know. It's yeah. just. And it works yeah. so wonderfully. Yeah. And I'm wondering, well. like in the midst of illustrating and mm -hmm. storyline, yeah. how do you find find the time to also sew? Because you are showing <laughs> these very intricate, you know, my mother, she, and I, I told you about that, my mother, yeah. Um, we're a fashion designer right now. She works in a hospital. Yeah. But I grew up with her being a fashion designer between it, her illustrating and then incredible? designing the clothes and sewing the clothes and having the fashion mm. shows. And, you know, it th yeah. that was the bread and butter throughout school. Um, mm. Up until, I want to say, when I was in college mm -hmm. is when she kind of slowed down. And, and, of course, now being at the hospital, she doesn't have as much time. Yeah. But when you talk about, like, double-breasted lapels, Mm -hmm. and you know just um pleated skirts all these things take time this is not yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is not something that you're just you know i'm gonna make a cummerbund in five seconds yeah. because it's not a five second thing so how do you find time to do that uh, um that's a good question because i feel like i never have any time um i i i i, I mean i i feel like i try to treat my page as a business so it, it's a it's a priority in my life I try to make sure that I've got the time to do it and so quite often I'll work a full day at my job and then I'll come home and I will work from after dinner until midnight you know sewing mm -hmm. or photographing and then I'll just go to sleep um but yeah it some some things because because of where in the industry for so long as well i i know how things should go i can look at something and be like okay well this is what the patterns need to look like this is how i need to construct it um if i'm constructing for barbie where do i minimize the amount of seams because the more seams you have the thicker it's going to be the more bulky it's going to be the more sewing you have to do um so where can i eliminate seams and keep fitting and uh yeah so i've got I've got a, I've got a big folder full of plastic sleeves and patterns um, or blocks that I use. And yeah, some of them just come together really quickly. Um, like, let's see who, 
I mean, all of all of the wedding ones. Um, I have I have some I have some in here. So like this girl, like her her jacket was an existing pattern that I had. Um, and I think I just altered how it sat at the back because the original one had these little peaks that went up and down. It was all angular. Um, the skirt uh, she is amazing. this really fantastic little trumpet silhouette, which um, yes. I, I'd done a I'd done a reproduction of the, the anniversary midge doll, which was one of a kind. And so I basically put together that skirt but eliminated the split and added a bit more flair. And so it, it just, it sort of, yeah, she she was something that I, I only had to sew it once, <laughs> you know, but there are other wow. things where I get to, um, like I get to making it and, and I have to sew it a few times. Um, like for Ken here in his little reproduction sort of eighties Miami Vice thing. Um, I had to make his top twice. Yes, I can see that. I can see that. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Because I made a mistake with like the placket and how that was meant to go. So something like this is very fiddly. Um, I don't know if that's focusing on him or if it's focusing on me. Um, but yeah, so I had, so yeah, so making his jacket and his pants were very easy. Making the little top underneath, which should be the simplest piece, it was actually the hardest. <laughs> so wow, yeah, yeah. I'm, um, I love it. I love it. And you know, it's so hard if you're gonna get something. And this is not at all knocking Mattel mm -hmm. at all, but Mattel for Ken clothes, it's pretty, yeah. pretty, uh, <laughs> pretty outrageous. It's, it's, <laughs> they just want them to wear shorts every single. <laughs> I think, I think it's, um, I mean, I think, I mean, I, 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 I don't know, like I can't speak to what Mattel, um, do, but from a production standpoint, like, because I work in many, well, I, I work for a designer and I mean, we do one off, one off things. Um, but I have worked in companies previously who do manufacture and manufacture off sea, overseas and, and whatnot. And sometimes, um, you know, and I, th I think it is symptomatic of where we are as people right now. Um, sometimes the skills aren't there, you know, sometimes the skills aren't there for the workforce. So you have to kind of um, compromise on your design in order to be able to bring something to market. Um, right. you know, sometimes it can't yeah. be as, as tricked up or, and because I think the prices of everything are so expensive and I know, I know, I know now in Australia, I think, um, I feel like our fashion industry in Australia is, um, probably in 10 to 20 years, like it could be in crisis because everyone's being taught to be a designer but no one's being taught no one wants to learn how to be a seamstress or a sewer or um a detailer you know so all of those skills where do you go for them you have to go overseas you wow. know, and other people other people overseas um cultivating the skills like they used to probably not because everything wants to be everything needs to be automated um yeah in order for you to make a bigger margin right so you have less people less actual physical skills it's yeah it's it's a strange situation i think that we're in <laughs> um and you and bring I, up I a very how big... it's gonna go yeah well you you bring up such a good point you bring up such a good point um i, I can definitely see that because when it comes to designing it or illustrating it mm -hmm. that's where the fun is yeah and then the, actually the sketching being in the part. work yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah 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 the sketching and drawing it from imagination i'm not saying that it's yeah. not a challenge because that's still a challenge too because mm -hmm. you want to make sure like i remember i used to bring drawings to my mother and she's like oh that won't work because that's not functional you know you got to be yeah. able to lift the arm you got to be able to do this yes. so it, it could still be a challenge on illustrating it because you want it to be functional not just cute yeah. or or mm -hmm. or you know sophisticated whatever the case is mm -hmm. but like you said the skills of being able to sew it are mm. a whole nother, another yeah. level, you know, um, and being able to 
um, create the puff sleeves because mm -hmm. I saw that in the wedding series and yeah. love it. I, like I said, I enjoy I enjoy every aspect of how you <laughs> present your, your page and your account and your stories. But it does take a lot of work. Mm -hmm. So you said that you do work in the industry. You already yeah. work for a designer. So you're mm -hmm. making clothes for humans as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, it, it, it ties in nicely to this um, photo series because I actually work in bridal. Um, so, oh, wow. yeah, yeah. So I spend my days amongst brides and wedding dresses. And uh, so I do, where I work, I do all of the patterns. Um, so I'm in charge of making sure that the gowns actually fit correctly and that they support you and that they cinch you in where they're supposed to. And, uh, yeah. And I work with the team of, um, seamstresses and detailers and we have a production manager and, um, yeah, it all, it all, sometimes it can be very stressful, but mm -hmm. it all comes together in the end. It is, yeah, we're all very skilled and very talented. Um, but yeah. That's, well, that's what I'm I do. gonna be keeping you in my prayers <laughs> as far as working. Do you have to work directly with brides? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean every, I mean every fitting except for the pickup. <laughs> so. Right? So, they are so special. They're so wonderful. I've been a bride, so I'm yeah. not at all. And I think I was kind of like a nonchalant bride because mm -hmm. I had seen my mother work with brides. <laughs> yeah, this is it. You're I'm the bride. type of client that we like. <laughs> There you go. Yeah, because you can get some through Bridezilla's. My mother mm -hmm. <laughs> has had some um, some very mm -hmm. serious situations with brides. Yeah. There is one in particular, and I do bring this yeah. up because I was just completely blown away. I think I was like eight. Uh, yeah. I was very young. I was like seven or eight, and I remember mm -hmm. so well. This lady literally sued my mom Are and took serious? her to court. Oh. Yes, because she said that, you know, like each fitting, mm -hmm. the dress would get tighter. Mm -hmm. And my mom's like, are you, you know, are you, you know, are you nervous? Mm -hmm. Are you maybe like eating and not, you know, you know, recognizing that you're picking up weight? No, 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 no. Mom have to take it out. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're talking about like taking it out through the seams oh. and then having to oh. possibly, you know, add in more fabric or, or uh -huh. just recut the whole piece yeah. because it's gotten tighter. Yeah. Come to find out she was pregnant and didn't want to say she was pregnant. Oh, you're kidding. And so she decided that, you know, because the dress was tight on the actual day, uh -huh. I'm going to go ahead and sue you. Although I already had my wedding mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it didn't, it didn't hold water, you know, once when it was discovered yeah. that yes, she was pregnant, but I'm telling you, like, and that's just like one case. We've had other <laughs> bridezillas take place as well. People who wouldn't come, well, there was one bride didn't come for any fittings. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even mean to like, it. it. it's just the bride. I, it's like the reason why I was like, I don't think I want to get into um, sewing, which I wish I would have done it much. more. Mm -hmm. But the brides were just mm -hmm. a whole nother, yeah. whole nother. It's, it's uh, a whole other level of intense. <laughs> yes, yeah, it is. Because the bride who never did come in for her mm -hmm. fitting, not even yeah. one time, came and was just like, she had such an attitude. I remember I had to confront her. Yeah. And I really didn't think that I would have to. But I was like, you're not going to talk to my mom like that after you haven't been here for any fitting. Yes. And your bridesmaids. And maid of honor walked off with free dresses because she had so many. Oh. She kept adding in bridesmaids. Yeah. She'd drop off to and be like, oh, I'm not friends with them anymore. I don't want them anymore. <laughs> so let's bring in these other three. Yeah. It's like, what? Oh my God. So people got away yes. with free dresses. And I was like, oh, this is a disaster. And I think that's what really made my mom yeah. be like, I, I can't keep doing this. Yeah. And actually, I take that back. I was married with kids when she was working on that wedding. So wow. I. I, like I said, my, I tip my head out to you and keep you in my prayers because brides are not always the easiest <laughs> at all to deal with. And then that brings us to your beautiful mm. wedding that you had for Alan and Midge, which was <laughs> done with a bride. And I imagine Midge had to be a way easier bride. <laughs> She's a way easier bride and Mattel made the dress. <laughs> so I didn't have to do anything. All I had to do was photograph her. <laughs> But it was such um, a beautiful wedding. A wedding series such as with Midge and Alan or, or Alan and Midge, whichever way, yeah. you know, someone wants to say it. With their wedding, how long did it did you did you photograph their wedding in one setting? And no, then I, you know, take time to post it, or are you taking pictures each time and posting? I am literally taking pictures each time and posting. I really so I thought I thought that 
February would be a very easy month for me. I was like, all I've got to do is, you know, all I've got to do is create the set. And I was like, and the dolls are already dressed. And then I was like, I can spend February catching up on some orders that I've got. I can be creating my next lot of stuff for March because I want to do something that's going to be a little bit more intense in terms of making and creating for March. Um, but it has been, uh, I just, I don't know. It got, it got to February 1st and I was actually being, in my, in my plan, I was meant to be posting from like the 27th of January through to the 29th of February. Um, and because I needed to make some wedding guest outfits, my set didn't come out exactly how I wanted mm -hmm. it to. So it was, I just kind of hit these little speed bumps. Um, and, and I just, I don't know. I, I have these moments where I just get really exhausted and I like, I just need to lie on the floor and watch a horror movie, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like just, or something really nice, you know, um, just to kind of get myself through it. Um, yeah. yeah. So at the, at the moment I try, like I, I do try and get like a bank of photos, like the ones that I posted last night, I literally post, I photographed them. I think about an hour and a half before I posted them. Really? Um, oh gosh. Yeah. Well, last night I was just feeling really inspired and every photo that I took, there was a whole bunch of other photos that I didn't post because, you know, you can only select X amount to put in a carousel. Um, but yeah, some nights, some nights the photography just goes really quick and it's, everyone's in focus and it looks beautiful. And then other times I have a very specific idea in my mind, what I want the scene to look like or how they should be posed. Um, and I cannot achieve it. So I'm there for three hours trying to get, you know, this series yes. of photos out. Yes. Um, but I think that's also good as well because, you know, not everything is easy in life. And sometimes I, I'm, I'm very much a perfectionist in everything that I do and doing this Instagram page it has sometimes there are nights where I'm like this isn't good enough to post and I don't think that it's I don't think that it's great um but I have to post it anyway you know this is this is what I can achieve this is as good as I can get it um and it's only me that thinks that way because sure. everyone else, the, the, po everyone else reacts very positively to it. And no one knows that, that I've thought this about my own work. <laughs> I've been there before. Yeah. I have been there before with, with the doll page. Mm -hmm. And even mm -hmm. when I had, I believe it was like a drama course. Yeah. Uh, was it my drama? I think it was my drama course. I had a playwright, I had playwriting courses and I had drama and I think it was for the yeah. drama course. Mm -hmm. Um, I can't even think of the teacher's name. I'm trying to remember her name, but I can't think of her. But I had wrote a play called Cloud Watching. Mm -hmm. And I did not like it at all. At That's all. a great title, and, though. Oh, thank you. Yeah. yeah, it had to do with the... Uh, it's in one of my books, in fact. Um, the daughter, her mother had dementia or had mm -hmm. um, Alzheimer's. Her mother had mm -hmm. Alzheimer's and she had to go... Not really had to, but she went to go visit her at the nursing home. Yeah. And Cloud Watching was something that they used to do when she was younger oh. and so that that's where that title came from yeah. her reminiscing on what they used to do and where things are at now mm -hmm. and i just really didn't like mm -hmm. it uh, and i pulled from the factor being that i was visiting my cousin who was yeah. my grandmother's first cousin at the nursing mm -hmm. home and i pulled from mm -hmm. that because she mm -hmm. was going through alzheimer's and um i didn't like it but i mm -hmm. always had really great reviews anytime whenever i've presented that play or I've had actors act out that play always yeah. have people you know, either get emotional or they feel mm -hmm. some connection to it mm -hmm. and it's just not one of my favorites I I, I I like it but I feel like there's something missing so I, yeah. I understand exactly what you mean but for mm -hmm. other people it it strikes them so yeah, it's, it connects with good that you do put it out because yeah. if we go by our own personal opinion <laughs> we'll probably mm -hmm. have like three pictures on our whole account <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. It's so now, true. Now, when you pull your stories, because you have amazing stories, and I, I commend you one because you're able to have a series of 
photos and then mm -hmm. once when that series ends that storyline ends you're able to shift to something else mm -hmm. and i find myself battling with that so before i even ask the next question mm -hmm. i'm curious to know how are you able to do that like um, how are you able to just be like okay i'm done with that story and you and then you're able to shift to the next story I I always just think I can I can come back to this at any time. Um, but where where it comes from, I think, is I I've I'm trying to be more planned with my account. Um, so I work out how, how many posts I want to do or allocate to a story or a series, and okay. then I. Um, you know, like for the sleepover, I think it was only two weeks and I was like, okay, well, it's going to be 14 posts or 15 posts, whatever fits into the grid because everything's always a multiple of three. Um, and, and I have, I've got about 10 different notebooks that I have, um, because as I get ideas, I'm like, okay, like sleepover, you know, so I have like a section in the notebooks that's for sleepover and then it's that ideas and then every May I do my rockers concert tour. So there's a concert tour idea section. When the inspiration comes to me, I just write into that section. And then when I'm ready to work with it, those ideas are sort of there to already incubating. Um, yes. So when it comes to actually doing that story and I'm like, okay, well I can do 15, 15 posts or 30 posts or, or whatever it is. I then kind of storyboard, well, not even storyboard. I just write them out, you know, like 21st of February will be um, cake cutting for Midge. And then after that, it'll be the bouquet toss. And then it'll be this, and then it'll be that. And then we'll move on to this. Um, I think when I, I and uh, I don't know if I'm answering your question <laughs> well at all um but this is, yeah this is just kind of how my process is I work out how how long I've got what are the key moments to kind of tell the story that I want to tell in that time yes. um and I feel like I always leave everything very open um I'm not good at finishing things off in terms of storytelling so that's why everything is kind of I won't I feel like like I'm not very prescriptive in like this is the way that the story is going to end. I like to leave it open so that someone else can imagine or pick up those threads and kind of carry it to wherever they want to in their imagination. Does that make sense? Yes, yes, yes. I like that. I like that. I'm trying. I, I I'm thinking of your storylines as you talk, and yeah. in particular, like with the Halloween. Friday mm -hmm. one. I totally assume. And of course, yeah. anybody can assume whatever they want, yeah. but I totally assume what that's it. Like, I read that one to our kids. <laughs> <laughs> that one. I feel, like, <laughs> I feel like that one, that definitely does have, I, I was thinking specifically about a movie when I was writing that or I was, I was creating that. And again, I just storyboard well right, storyboarded out my scenes um you know this is when rudder is going to die and then this is what's going to happen with tracy and then um over here something's going to happen with star and sean and um and, and trying to and trying to work out in which order they were going to perish Make their demand. yeah <laughs> and i was i was like i was like I really, I was like, I want Kelly and Vanessa to be the last ones, you know, cause yes. they're my favorites. Um, you know, so I always knew that that was how it was going to be. And then like, <laughs> I don't know. I, I... <laughs> um, it was Tracy, really good. Like... Tracy was my least favorite, but everyone loved her. So I was like, okay, well she can't Ooh. die. <laughs> she can't die so quickly. <laughs> I was like, okay, well, she's gonna she's gonna get pulled out, and so I was like, let's let's kill off Star and Sean first because no one will expect them because they're the blonde ones. They they should be the final ones in 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 horror film lore, right? I was like, so no, no, they will go first. Um, and yeah, and just trying to yeah work it all out. But actually, Tracy's <laughs> Tracy's death scene was my favorite in the shower. <laughs> 
remember. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely remember. Oh. <laughs> and that was another thing too. Do you also like write down the dialogue in your notebook um, or do you write down the dialogue as you're typing it? I write down the dialogue like while I'm typing it so um I have my little in my notebook I've got my prompt for what my scenes are going to be what my photos have to be um and usually it's just like a one-line thing of um you know uh Star and Sean making out in the Star Traveler for instance so I kind of take my photos for that um and then I come back and I look at my photos and right before I post it is when I actually write my story so it's top of it's top of my mind stuff. It's not planned, essentially. So, in the fifteen minutes before I post something, is when I'll actually construct the story that goes with it. Now, will we be expecting another Halloween thriller? Yes, for this yes, year. Yes, you will. There but you it'll go. be it will be different. It will be very different. Okay. Um, because I mean, even though the people who loved the Friday the Thirteenth really loved it, um, in terms of mass appeal it didn't have it i actually i thought it would do much more than it did um for me uh and while i loved it and the people who loved it really really loved it i think in terms of like the color and the tone for a barbie page i think it was a little bit dark um yeah so the next one that i do i've already got ideas in my head and i I think you guys are going to love it. I'm going to love it. Oh, I know. Um, I, love, I, love, I love that one. It's love still it. going to be a, it's still gonna oh, be a well. slasher film, oh. but the but it's going to be a lot brighter and, and poppier and hit those nostalgia points that I think everyone really likes. So yeah. I'm, I'm excited for it. I, I like whatever material that you bring to your page. <laughs> we literally <laughs> transition from like, Halloween into New Year's yeah. and that that had a different <laughs> color palette. It really did and every you know the yeah. tone was different. Mm -hmm. And I was there for it. I'm yeah. <laughs> so when you tell yeah. me that this one's gonna be different, I'm here for it. Yeah. yeah, this is this is gonna be very different. I mean, the Halloween thing, um that was that was so inspired by one of eighty eight. He is so creative. Oh. Um yes. And yes. and right and he was inspired by another one of our mutual friends ray the unusual um so ray the unusual had done a short film which i think you can watch on youtube um called the clown and it features pizza parties pizza party skipper and courtney and um and it's that classic kind of 80s horror film and uh one of 88 worked with ray and was like you know I mean, I, I don't know because I wasn't there, so I'm just paraphrasing what I think happened. They kind of like collaborated, and one of 88 wanted to take it back to its origins. Um, and oh, so that's wow. how he created his series of The Clown, which is incredible. I mean, the stuff that he comes up with, the references, the deep cuts to different horror films. Um, yes. It's just such a talent. The detail. Yeah. <laughs> such a talent um yeah so yeah it it yes, had me yes it and had i me love hooked. <laughs> same here yeah. same here it was yeah. literally my uh thriller soap opera yes. <laughs> <laughs> i didn't wait for the next episode i was like oh my god what's happening yeah. next uh it was very good it was very so very good i think good. even one night one night i even had a nightmare from it i was like oh, oh wow <laughs> <laughs> it got me pretty good, you know, between your story and your story. <laughs> it's so good. And it was very, very intense Halloween time for me in yeah. 2023. <laughs> but I'm here for it for 2024 again. Excellent. But I do Excellent. love, I yeah. am. <laughs> I do love that you said that you leave your storylines mm -hmm. open. And I recently mm -hmm. watched a movie. Uh, what movie was? I think it was Mr. Nobody with my husband. Yes. And it. <laughs> <laughs> pretty intense. Yeah. I felt like yeah. somebody was just like violence and gore for no reason, Ooh. but I was there to watch it. <laughs> and one of the things that I did like from a storyline thematic uh perspective mm -hmm. is that they left the story open to yeah. where they may have a number two, they may yeah. not. But mm -hmm. 
it was left in such a way where you have to make the connections yourself. Actually, just throughout the story itself, you had to make connections. Like I end up finding out later on after the movie almost that they were brothers. They were? How were they brothers? And and yes. what did the dad used to do where he was, you know, Christopher Lloyd's character is also mm. a renegade. So I love that perspective of allowing your audience mm. yeah. to be able to come to their own conclusions mm. and allowing them in such a way to be a co-writer with, yeah. with, with your own storyline. I think this is an awesome perspective. So when you say that you have your storylines open, I think that that's amazing. Where do you get your storylines from? Are you pulling from personal life or TV or people watching? It's, um, it's a bit of everything, to be honest. But mainly it's, it's movies and, um, and personal experience. Like the sleepover with Christy, that was a bunch of personal experience in that. Um, and, and things that maybe I didn't even do, but I kind of dreamt I would have done when I was a teenager. Mm -hmm. Um, cause I was, I've always been a very cautious person. <laughs> I've never been very, um, I've never been one to take risks. So yeah. So that, that with that and with the wedding stuff, um, I watched father of the bride. I watched, um, what else did I watch? The wedding date. I watched the wedding planner. I watched all the wedding films, um, and kind of cherry picked little ideas from that. Um, plus also with the wedding series, uh, there were a set of trading cards back in the nineties called wedding bells for midge, which have this really fantastic photography. Um, and so some of, some of my storylines have pulled threads from that as well, which, uh, they're incredible. Um, the star and Sean Friday the 13th slasher, I spent all of september just watching friday the 13th all the way through um and it was a really dark time <laughs> at the end of it i was like i just want something really light i need some romance i need some comedy uh, i was like this has proven to me that i'm not a psychopath because when i killed off star and sean i was like i didn't enjoy this at all <laughs> like oh my goodness. i had <laughs> Have, I literally have, I met my husband in 2007, so I mm -hmm. want to say I started writing this book in mm -hmm. 2005, yeah. and okay. I still have not finished it, because wow. I feel that for the book to really, and the, the story mm -hmm. to make sense, mm -hmm. one of the characters has to, has to die, yeah. but I can't bring myself to do it like i yeah. have not done it so this book has literally just been sitting on my usb have not done yeah. anything with it because i <laughs> i really do battle with that i'm like yeah. how do i do that so how did you like overcome that i i just knew that i had to get through it i just had to in order for the story to progress it just they just had to and i mean in a slasher film the characters are generally expendable except for your your last couple the ones that are that are your finals um everyone else is just a body right in in a slasher film sure. so um and yeah and i just I, I don't know i don't know it was just it was very hard it was <laughs> so hard to photograph it's that just, see, like, series. for me like yeah. it is it's so hard and yeah. even when we talk about in our doll community I, i've had yeah. some storylines where i was like okay i'm gonna mm -hmm. i'm gonna go ahead and, and do this to the character and i had it yeah. written down in my outline mm -hmm. and then stuff will be going on in the community and people may be saying like their loved mm -hmm. one passed away and i'm like i can't do it and yeah. i don't and then i sit there trying to figure out mm. how to maneuver my story because mm. i've allowed myself to get influenced by what's going on yeah. which isn't a bad thing but mm -hmm. like i don't want to put something out and then it bothers someone how do you yes. overcome that yeah i actually didn't think too much about it <laughs> to be honest I I, i've got to get to that point <laughs> I, I i didn't think i mean i mean i had i did have a lot of comments when i announced that i was doing the friday the 13th being like oh you know like i don't know if i like horror or you know like i i can't do scary and so my i think maybe i worked through those feelings quite early on being like this i need to make sure that whatever i post is for a general audience 
Um, you know, I don't want there to be anything that's too gratuitous. I don't want to linger on anything. I, I did test some scenes where I had some blood and I was like, no, no, that's, that's not what we're doing. <laughs> you know, like it was just, it was too much. Um, so yeah. Um, I think, yeah, for me, it was about, I was like, if I can keep the tone at a certain level, uh, try and, you know, make sure that, you know, if this was a movie, it would be PG-13. You know, you don't see too much. No one's naked. That's why Star died in her underwear. Like, you know, as opposed to a real slasher film. Um, I know, right? <laughs> you know, there I have to whenever whenever I'm creating something, especially something that has like a sense has sensitive content like that, I'm like, okay, well I have to make sure that it passes a standard or not even not even like morality but just like what is going to have what's not going to be too too traumatizing because ultimately these are kids things and you know what if a kid saw this and was traumatized by it i couldn't live with that you know i Um, understand um, i understand yeah yeah well i i I enjoy and i'm glad that you did take that that Mm -hmm. risk with i know that you said you weren't very much of a risk taker you were more cautious and (laughs) I understand that too. I've made a lot of, you know, conscientious decisions in life. And I'm glad that we do have our dolls where we can kind of live vicarious. Yeah. <laughs> Take the risk that we didn't. But I, I love that um, with your storyline, even though you kept it PG-13, you still took mm-hmm. a lot of different risks. And it is encouraging yeah. for me um, because I do feel that sometimes I'm not yeah. always pushing the buttons like I want to for my yeah. story not, not, not so much as pushing buttons for people but just like allowing my characters mm-hmm. to fully yeah. speak yeah and it does cause a disruption for mm-hmm. me maybe no one else notices mm-hmm. it but I do yeah well I mean if you don't take if you don't push it to those parts then the character can't develop or when they do develop then there's sure. someone might go back and be like hey this doesn't make sense to me why they went this direction when previously it's here. So I think it, it's such a delicate balance, isn't it? You know, it is. Yeah. It really, really is. And here mm. it is. We have Disney movies. Shout out to Disney. That always has like <laughs> a, a parent, especially the mom that's not in the picture. She's passed yeah. on as a stepmom. And they have no problem doing it <laughs> at yeah. all. Like, yes. Yeah. Just them off. No problem. But- <laughs> 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 yeah, I, it's like a battlefield, but I, I do plan on 2024 as a mm-hmm. goal to uh, to get over that hump, to get over that hump. Yeah. So yeah, I, do it. I wonder, do it. and we talk about risk taker, mm-hmm. you take pictures in public, outdoors. Oh, oh. I love it. What, <laughs> what is that like for you? <laughs> it was scary. It was so scary. Um, <laughs> I, so I never re- really took photos outside before but i was going to convention in america and i was spending in time a month in america prior to convention um which is my first time in the states and and i was like i was like there's no way i'm gonna get enough content shot before i go so i was like well what why don't we take barbie with me and um and film some and shoot some content on the fly and yeah yeah it took some effort to get over that and i mean i guess i started taking photos of barbie in public in la which you know la is creative it's a fun town i don't think anyone's really i don't think anyone's paying attention to you you know in la like you could do the weirdest thing and and no one would bat bat an eye because they've probably seen it all before um so by the time i finished my week in la i was like oh yeah i feel really confident i mean my friend my friend mona who we went to santa monica together um she was like you know she's like do you want to get some photographs with your doll because i had my doll with me in my bag Mm -hmm. no no because that was like really early early on in my trip Mm -hmm. And I was just like, you know, what if, what if people are like looking and she's like, oh, it doesn't matter. You know, don't care. Like it just, you know, you do you and, and stuff. And, and I wasn't there, but then, um, I had, it was the day after that where I went to, um, 
Hollywood Boulevard where I'd previously done some Pretty Woman stuff. And I was like, okay, well, we'll get her out here. We have to get her on the Walk of Fame. We have to have her photographs here and here and here. And no one paid any attention. So, and I concocted in my mind an entire backstory if someone asked me about it, like, you know, why are you taking these photos? Oh, because, you know, this is what I do. This is my business, um, you know. <laughs> um, but no one, no one asked me. I think someone, when I was on her drive, someone asked me, they were like, because I was changing her outfit. And they're like, oh, that's a really beautiful doll. Like, where did you get that? And I was like, oh, it's a Mattel one from you know, the 90s, blah, 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 you know, and she was like, oh, you know, your daughter must really, you know, your daughter's going to love her. And I'm like, yeah, it's not for my daughter, <laughs> you know, um, I'm just here taking some photos. <laughs> um, okay, then, bye. <laughs> um, yeah, so all, all through America, it didn't, worry me too much taking photos of Barbie but when I got back to Australia I have not taken any photos of Barbie outside I took her to the movie premiere and I took some photos mm -hmm. there and the vibe was just so different it's so different on your home turf um I was like even though these are a whole bunch of strangers it was just like mm -hmm. you know I could see these people people again you know like the people in america i'm not gonna see for another year <laughs> i do i get it i get yeah. it i do but yeah. i still give you huge mm. kudos for doing that because that's not always an easy thing to do at all yeah so i do i understand that is that your mini me yeah that you, that, that, that you have yeah she um she's a special one i won her in a competition back in 1997 through barbie magazine so she was one of the last barbies i got as a as a elder teen um and at the time i thought she was like shania twain she was just so beautiful um mm -hmm. and then yeah when i made it everyone was getting a mini me right everyone's doing it and i was like okay well i kind of need one you know who do i look like in the barbie family and i was like oh maybe i could be horse riding barbie from 1997. So, i love it yeah. i do i do i do and i <laughs> thought that was your i thought that was your me i said let me make sure let me ask let me yeah. ask now you know i have my own it's a small it's a small mm -hmm. special connection to australia because I have been in love with the movie Muriel's Wedding. Because I was so, so young. And I, I think I told you about that. Because you had. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. That was one of my favorite movies. I was so young when I saw it. And um, I just had such. A, I, I want to say it was like life transforming yeah. for me. Yes. I just yes. love the movie. One, oh, fell in love with Abba so immediately. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I have, I have, you know, CDs and stuff upstairs. Yeah, yeah CDs. I know, like, that's, like, like, like so old right now. No. Everybody strings, but... Well, no, because <laughs> people are now going back to cassettes, so it's not that old. <laughs> <laughs> True, they really, really are. After, of course, when we had our cassettes, I remember I was talking to a childhood friend of mine who also has the name Brooke. Yeah. This was years ago. Yeah. And we used to put our cassettes in, like, the newer cassette players, and it would eat yeah. up our cassettes. I was like, what's going on? Like, they don't want you to have anything from back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> it did. It felt like a conspiracy. Um, I was like, what's going oh on? But I do. I love ABBA, and it mm -hmm. was definitely that movie that, mm -hmm. that did it for me. I mean, when it comes yeah. to storyline, mm -hmm. I I just feel like the movie is just flawless. Isn't it incredible? It just felt so it's, flawless. It was. Mm -hmm. It has. It was so beautiful. Yeah. So many, so many emotions are captured in that film. You know, it starts off and it's so it's light and it's fun, but then it has this really dark underbelly to it and such emotion mm -hmm. and yeah. Then when you find out that he wrote it inspired by his sister um yeah and what and i didn't know that part yeah really i'm i'm sure i haven't imagined that fingers crossed oh, that i haven't made this up in my mind wow. but i'm pretty sure yeah that it's yeah sort of semi inspired by his sister and and some of the things that she did when she was younger um but yeah so does 
Yeah. Does that make him the brother that didn't really care? <laughs> who knows? Yeah, he could have been the one who was like out, you know, <laughs> Perry in the backyard, <laughs> kicking the ball around, not mowing the mowing the lawn. <laughs> oh, it, it did start off kind of like, but then, like for me, I relate it to her being like this kind of like misfit, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I don't know, like the parents' marriage was so dysfunctional. Yeah, that everything was just so dysfunctional in her life, and then she was like striving to be popular, and people that were popular yeah. had all these other oh issues, and they were just oh my gosh, they were just. Aren't trying to the put out this facade people? like they were so perfect yeah, yeah and they were the worst people yeah take and then she wanted Dagana. to be like them and isn't it kind of like the world of social it's media that makes us want to so it is yes. it so is um i yeah i i don't know i don't know nero's wedding came at a really good time for me because i growing up i thought australian culture was very cringe and um and especially our film industry, because I was like, okay, what have we done? Crocodile Dundee. Like, and that's got nothing to do with what Australia feels like <laughs> or looks like. Or... <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. But it's like, it's like a fake idea of what Australia is. I was like, you know, you, you go overseas and people think that we ride kangaroos to work. Like, this is not real but then muriel's wedding comes along and then uh priscilla queen of the desert comes along and it just yes. these yes. films yes, suddenly felt like like they, they weren't hollywood films but they definitely had a polish and they had they were fully realized and they weren't this um caricature of what australia is it kind of showed you a little bit more of how we are as people, I guess, um, yes. and our, our humor and, um, and some of the sadness and the trials and tribulations that you go through. Um, I mean, Australia is a great place. Don't get me wrong, but, um, yeah, Muriel's wedding is, yeah. it is perfect. It really is. It really is. <laughs> yeah. It really is. And it just, you know, it added, um, you know, when I hear what you're saying it, and I get it because Crocodile Dundee for me yeah. was not relatable. Like yeah. I said, my mother loved it. She watched yeah. it every time. Every time it came mm -hmm. on TV. This was, of course, before <laughs> cable. So, or at least cable yeah. being uh, available for all households the way mm -hmm. that it is now. So, every time it came on, she watched it. Yeah. But when it came to Muriel's wedding, yeah. that one really hit me hard because it was relatable. Mm -hmm. It was mm -hmm. very relatable um, for me, no matter what age you were. And everyone wanted, uh, and even right now, you want that kind of girlfriend that's just yeah. ride or die. I just whatever you want to do, you know. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, you you need you no, need gonna... to find your Rhonda. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes, and just help put you out of your shell. And yeah, you know, even though she lied to her, she was still forgiving of her. And <laughs> I. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. And it really did. Ha you know, it was. Um, what, what kind of piece is it? Like a young adult mm -hmm. find yourself, yeah. finding yourself, kind of of journey. And yes. I, I did. So if you guys never seen Muriel's wedding, definitely check it out. Yeah. I, I don't know if it's on YouTube or what it's, kind of platform that it streams incredible. on. But it is. Yeah, it's really, it's really incredible. I mean, like, I think if, if you can't find it anywhere else, I'm sure it would be on Apple Plus or Apple TV. It's definitely available to rent, if not purchase. Um, and if you're old school, go find a, a DVD because you won't regret yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I think when it came out for VHS too. Oh yes, God. yes. I would have had it on VHS back in the day. <laughs> I know, I know. I still have some, some of them put away somewhere, somewhere. <laughs> oh, as we wrap up, I just want to say thank you. If you guys have any questions, definitely put them in the queue right mm -hmm. now um, so we can answer them. So any questions or comments, definitely put them in. I want to thank you for allowing us to be able to experience. Someone said, I'm searching right now. It's a great movie. <laughs> it is a really good movie. You won't regret it. It's fun. It's fun. And it brings some tissues because you'll need them. <laughs> so true. So true. Yeah. Yeah. I want to say, like, for me, it would be the beginning of the movie. Uh, mm -hmm. as things were, were, were being unveiled and then, yeah. then you're kind of laughing. It's, it's a roller coaster kind of movie. Yeah, it is a really, it's, it's everything. Part. It's, it's real life. 
<laughs> it really, really is. It really, really is. Where do you get your miniatures from? So I know that, that you're making clothes. You're making the dioramas. Where do you yep. get your miniatures from? Um, what? Give me some examples of the miniatures that you'd like to know where I get them from. Because <laughs> um, sometimes oh, I you're make fine. Them sometimes. You always have such details yeah. in your in, in your um in your story in your post. Yeah. So I'm thinking mm -hmm. about um like with your Christmas one. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you, you... It's a Christmas. The Christmas one. A lot of that is Barbie branded um furniture, and because you even had like. Yeah. Like okay. the little toys the, the and stuff. Like, yes, yes, oh. yes, 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 yes. The toys. Okay. Great. Yeah. The, um, mm. So the little toys that they are wrapping in some of the photos, those are all Mattel. Um, some of them are like mini, mini, mini brands figures. Um, there's this really cool pack of like 20 that you can get. That's a random assortment. You can get it on, on Amazon. Um, so some of them were that, some of them were Mattel Kelly stuff from the nineties. When it came to the department store with the Barbies, I made all of those. So yeah, that took, and, and that took. Someone me said there were, uh, who is that? Gray Skull Warrior extras that all handmade Brooke is amazing. And yeah. Amazing. Yeah. That's my friend. <laughs> <laughs> that's my friend. <laughs> hey, <laughs> um, the the, the, Barbie, the Barbie next store, level. Yeah, yeah it, it took me about two weeks to make that to be honest um that's so like, that uh, you said two weeks like it was long that's actually a short period yeah. of time it, <laughs> it is a short period of time <laughs> but it did it took me it took me a while to do but again that was when i was creating that story that scene was very important and I knew that I had to have that scene in there um and then when it did so well I was like okay well they've got to come back to this toy store um <laughs> and I think in the future there'll be some more things centered around the Barbie aisle um what other miniatures do I have I've like my you had the slumber party yeah. and we have like records uh, you, you, records, you make I'm, yeah I make I made the records. Um, one of the records is actually an image that I used uh, with permission from Ray the Unusual. He'd created a Barbie and the Rockers album cover uh, when Diva goes solo. Uh, so I used I used that, and then yeah, I made all of those. Um, the magazines I made. Um, the front cover is a image that I'd sent. I, I made. I'd photographed, and then the back cover was advertising that I pulled off of the internet, um, you know, just searching for, uh, you know, like eighties magazine ad adverts and whatever came up into Google and what caught my eye, I just pulled those and, and pasted them down. Um, what else? The board games and the, yes! yeah, I made yes! those as well from images pulled off of the internet. I just searched for the box and then, Cobbled them together in Illustrator and printed them out and made them up. Um, wow. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. it's it is it's, it's incredible. It's, it's a lot of work, <laughs> but it's um, I know I know you tried, but it's, but it's, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> but it's fun, and it, I mean it adds so much color and texture to the story as well, and and nostalgia because a lot of the time. I mean, I'm not saying this is everyone, but I feel like a lot of time it's about the image on Instagram. They just want to see, they want to interact with the image. They don't really read the text, but then you've got people who actually really appreciate the storyline behind it. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah. And I, I believe that's what, you know, you just said it. What we really do feel mm -hmm. ooze from your, each one of your posts and your, mm -hmm. your captions and your pictures and your reels mm -hmm. is fun. You yeah, know, you really you know you can really feel the fun that you're having with your characters mm -hmm. and um i i appreciate it i genuinely mm -hmm. do appreciate it okay. now just for anyone who's joining or has mm -hmm. has been joining or will join when you watch this again we want to let you know that you can post your photos for midge and alan's wedding up until mm -hmm. the 29th correct 29th yeah the 29th, 29th of February. so make sure to get there mm -hmm. yeah so you can join their wedding which is very <laughs> very 
it's so beautiful <laughs> yeah. and so very beautiful now when it comes to clothes mm -hmm. um as we close as we close here yeah. goes the clothes i did <laughs> notice that you sell mm -hmm. some of your items do you have an etsy shop or i i do have an etsy shop but i don't sell clothes on etsy unfortunately um i found that on etsy the clothes didn't actually do that well they just sat there and i was paying listing fees so i am trying to make sure on a more regular basis that after i finish a cycle of stories um every month or every two months i will actually be selling on the outfits that i've created um so that'll be through oh, Instagram yeah. and I will, I'll make sure that I announce it. So that way people have an opportunity to be online and purchase. Um, okay. If um, on my Etsy store though, if you are looking for a faux magical mansion, I have my wallpapers up there as downloads. Um, okay. So there's something that you can just download and print and assemble yourself. Um, but yeah. Now yeah. is your Etsy shop the same name? Mm -hmm. Okay. It is. It is. And it's in my buyer. You can click through. Um, okay. Okay. In the buyer. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I, I, I love your clothes. I really, really do. And I missed out on this last one that you had. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when you yeah. had this last, so I was like, snap. It, it just came at a really, yeah. you know, odd well, time was, for me financially, but I'm, I'm, it, I'm ready for this next one. It came at an odd time financially. <laughs> it came at an odd time financially for me too. Um, I didn't. I didn't plan it. I just had. I was like, I have all of these clothes. I have all of this stuff. What am I doing with it? Let's just put it out there and see what sells. So, um, learning curve for me. I think I need to make sure that I just advertise a bit better and. I need to make sure that my times are right so that way everyone across the world has an equal opportunity of um stepping up some boulevardia oh yeah. i mean the times is always going to be a bit odd i think it's yeah. just a first come first serve yeah. <laughs> and I, <can't> come. <laughs> I have no problem when you you know whenever you organize your next one i don't mm -hmm. mind putting that into my story and even into my feed and someone mm -hmm. said your clothes quality are a, are stunning that was porcelain mm -hmm. piggy Thank and you. yes i can tell it like i said i've i've spent time with my mother i can mm -hmm. tell you just don't see that kind of detail yeah. um yeah. not as often it's very rare mm -hmm. to get that kind of detail when it comes to doll clothes and especially with human clothes so mm -hmm. it's very much appreciated like i said i'm going to be ready for this next one <laughs> Excellent. Done and done. Or, yeah, there'll be there'll be some wedding outfits for sure coming. And um and in March there will be some others. Um I'm really excited about what's gonna happen in March, but I don't want to tell anyone what happens yeah, or what I'm planning help. until until it actually is up because you know what, things might change things might change. <laughs> so, it may. Just, yeah. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, may it will it change because your characters have spoken and <laughs> maybe you decided maybe. to alter it? It could be it could be that it just takes a lot longer to make and I need to find something to post instead. <laughs> okay. I understand that too. I really, really do. I I do. I get it. I get it. And mm -hmm. I also noticed before we leave that you do mm -hmm. lives. I caught a couple mm -hmm. of your lives a little bit late yeah. for me. I was like, oh, I missed it. So I oh. caught it on, on replay. Yeah. Do you do this on a regular basis where someone can catch your live or is that random? No, it's really random. Um, my The only other person that I've gone live with is Chris and I've done a few. He's at Barbie and Beyond. He's incredible. Um, totally one of my best friends and so grateful to have him in my life um and he to get me to go live he had to like you massage me for, for about a year before i agreed <laughs> because i just i don't like showing my face on the interwebs um but yeah and and i think the other live that i did recently was literally just about the barbie movie and i was like you know i've seen it i've seen it before people have seen it I want to share some thoughts and in terms of sharing my thoughts i haven't watched that one too many times because i don't think that it was very concise or clear and i kind of yeah i think it's much better to do a live with someone else like have a chat um well i 
Hey, yeah. I did see, I did see your, uh, I saw both. Well, well, cause you had a few yeah. with Barbie yeah. and Beyond. Yeah. And you know, I think it was like three parts. It was like three yeah, parts that's, of it. That's right. Yeah. And, cause it had to sit in the grid <laughs> to be three. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. So I did. I enjoyed what you had with Barbie and Beyond. And I also enjoy uh, the one that you had where you did the review for the movie. Yay. I think that you were kind of in a tight spot with it because you didn't want to reveal too much. Yeah. But what really yeah. came out of it was how much fun that you had. The impression that the movie had on you. And so I, I personally enjoyed uh, seeing you talk about the movie and hearing you saying how you know it felt really good to be able to have this experience and have other people that were doll collectors that were also there yeah. and the experience that they had and feeling like for once yeah. that you're not unusual yeah that the people who yes. don't get the barbie are more so the unusual one so yeah. i i enjoyed your perspective on it and i feel that it had value but it was a it was just kind of in a tight spot as far as like, how do I tell you what I'm feeling without telling you the movie? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, that was, that was it. I definitely didn't want to give anything away. I didn't want to spoil anything, but I just knew that I wanted to share how much fun it was and how much it exceeded my expectations because I had very low expectations going into the movie i didn't want to get my hopes up in case it was something completely different but then the movie that we received is something that i could never have imagined and it was so surprising so delightful um yeah yeah i understand i understand i i actually ended up i waited because one with us having such a full-size family is going to be really mm -hmm. difficult to go to the movies yeah. with anyone and but but in the same hand i came to learn that it really wasn't a movie for kids mm. so i ended up seeing the movie uh, myself and i saw that once when it mm. you know was streaming yeah i enjoyed it i mm. i felt more like i think the part that i enjoyed more than anything mm. was that it allowed us as collectors mm. as adult collectors mm -hmm to collectively feel mm -hmm. um feel a part of our niche mm -hmm. to, to really solidify mm -hmm. that yeah. i personally for me mm -hmm. i enjoy the storyline that you bring i yeah. enjoy the storyline that you know there are other instagrammers in our doc community mm -hmm. bring i will admit mm -hmm. for myself i was really expecting mm -hmm. to see what what we have here so mm -hmm. i i enjoyed it but it still wasn't for me what yeah. i see and what i feel whenever i'm reading your page yeah. and i'm reading yeah. your caption and looking at your photos i just wanted to be able to see our collectors be a part of it like i i, yeah. I, I told one of my really good friends my my doll my, i call her my soul sister because yeah. we are soul sisters and um i just i adore her and i thank god for this community because just like you said barbie mm. beyond mm. you guys are best friends you guys, did you link up through the community? We did. We did. See, yeah. it's like so beautiful about <laughs> about what we have because I mm -hmm. would never have met my soul sister without mm -hmm. stepping out and doing this. Mm -hmm. And so yes. I, I appreciate what we have here. So my thing was like, even if I never ever got contact, mm -hmm. I would have loved to see what you would have mm -hmm. done to influence that story. Yeah, I, I would have loved to have seen what yeah. other doll collectors would have done to influence that story. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I wasn't against it. Mm -hmm. I love what they did. I'm hoping that we get more. Yeah. I'm hoping that yes. they contact and DM some of our doll collectors, yeah. especially with storylines, especially with you have fashion. Mm -hmm. I I mean, just the stuff that you have the fashion mm -hmm. that was don't don't get me wrong, mm -hmm. it was awesome. But I love yeah. what you have. I oh, love the you. passion that you have with what you do, the details that you have, um, that you're that that you bring in. You literally you're you're not just giving homage to the '80s fashion. Mm -hmm. You're literally bringing it in. I, I can even see in some of your fashions, you've got little tiny shoulder pads, <laughs> which is. <laughs> <laughs> It's with shoulder pads, and I can see yeah. that, you know. The, and we really didn't see that so much right there. So it wasn't mm -hmm. me knocking it; it was just me saying, "Give me some authenticity yeah. from 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 what we have in our community because it's so mm -hmm. rich and it's mm -hmm. so textured and beautiful." Yeah. And I wanted to see that right there. Yeah. But otherwise, I'm glad that we have it. It's the first. Yeah. Let's mm -hmm. get to a second. Let's let's, well, let's is, bring in who we have right here. This is it. I think if there is going to be another movie 
it has to be a completely different direction because like Margot Barbie's story is done yes. and dusted. She's, she's, she's a lady now. She's in the real world. She's, um, she's a person. Um, so yeah. So it, I, I think the natural progression is, is that it's a completely new slate. It's someone else's story. I mean, in terms of Barbie movies, it could be an anthology that it, it's not, sequels it's there's a, a thread from the original movie that comes through but it's not the main focus you know what i yes. mean like it's it's yes. it's got to yes. be it's got to be a completely different story completely different take so yeah no one are kids to get some love i felt like the kids just kept yeah. like <laughs> oh i love i love ryan in this film i thought he was so fun <laughs> I did. I did. Oh, I, you know, I'm married yeah. and I have, we have 10 kids and I have seven boys out of the 10. And I was yeah. like, that's not, not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I just, I loved, I loved how Barbie World was just the inverse of our world. Like, yeah, in terms of, in terms of represent, like what women can be in Barbie land. Yeah. They were everything and, yes. and Ken was just an afterthought but i liked i liked how it kind of brought him into the center and was like yeah you know what what about ken what is happening with ken doesn't he have a rich interior monologue or needs or wants you know yeah yeah and i think yeah I think that was kind of explored a little bit in, in his his aria <laughs> that he does of you know like but there's there's so much more that can be told, I think, in these stories. I agree. I think it's gonna be. I, yeah, yeah. I, I so agree. There's so much yeah. more. So hopefully, hopefully we get another one. And I think that when we think of Barbie, yeah. uh, you know, just like you said, there there's so many different careers that Barbie mm -hmm. has done and mm -hmm. still does, and has really opened the doors for young girls to yeah. imagine who she can be. Yeah. And so I really look forward to maybe they can pull some of the Barbies that are still in Barbie land yeah. who are, you know, you have president Barbie, you had a Barbie yeah. that was a writer, you have a Barbie that mm -hmm. was, let's get Mitch yeah. something, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> There's still so many Barbies that in Barbie land that even if, you know, Margot yeah. Robbie's Barbie is now part of mm -hmm. the real world, yeah. who else can, can take that, that platform yeah. and share their story. Cause That's each one has a story. Good. That's it. I would love to see how Skipper got from Barbie Land to Key West to try and babysit those kids. So <laughs> I would love that. It's so true. It's so true. I love it. I love it. But I think this is my last question. This is my last mm -hmm. question. As I said it earlier, but this is my last question, honestly. Okay. How do you hear the voices of your characters? How do I hear them? Um, I. I don't know. I don't know. I think they all just live in my head. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Actually, I've never thought, I've never thought about that. So, um, yeah, I don't know. How, how do you hear your thoughts? Oh, like, how, do, how, do, um, how do they come to A you? lot of times, a lot of times for me, I'll have an outline outline either in my mind or what mm -hmm. I've written down a mm -hmm. combination of both of the yeah. photos I want to take mm -hmm. and then I take those photos and then I kind of will stare mm -hmm. at the photos for a while mm -hmm. and and just you know like thinking about the outline mm -hmm. and then looking at their faces or the mm -hmm. gestures and then I'll kind of like hear mm -hmm. what the voices are what, you know what, what that dialogue would be and then mm -hmm. I'm a type of person where I'll type it uh, you mm -hmm. know, like as I, you know, the storyline's coming out as I type it mm -hmm. on onto Instagram, mm -hmm. and yeah. so that's where the voices really do like, unless it's something that mm -hmm. is concrete that I wrote down mm -hmm. that I want this character to say. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I just kind of let it flow from what the pictures are saying to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I think it, it, they all just kind of live in my head, really. <laughs> um, and when it comes time to writing, I've already done my photography. Maybe, I mean, because we do it, 
I like, there's just no, I, I, I haven't personally analyzed my process. Um, because I, I think from, from the time that you do your outline, you do your little, my, like for me, it's photo prompts. This is what you're going to be shooting. I think by the time you've shot it and by the time you go to sit down to write it, maybe unconsciously I've already written it in my head because mm-hmm. when it does come time to actually sit down and write it, maybe that's why I can do it so easily and in 15 minutes before I post and not think about it. You know what I mean? It's yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You subconsciously yeah, have a storyboard in your storyboard in your head. Yes. Yeah, yes. It's a great hit, word it on, hit it on the head. Yeah. 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 But it's already, it's already sort of there. It's already been percolating for a while. So yeah. Yes. yeah. I like that. I like that. I like that. But yeah, that's, that's mm-hmm. definitely a question I have because you do have different characters. You have well, different dolls that are, mm-hmm. are your characters and you're going from Halloween, Christmas, New yeah. Year's, you know, summer party, wedding. So how do you hear all those different characters and what yeah. what their desires are? And I, I, I love that. Yeah. Well, I, 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 I believe you've already answered it. You know, just doing all this different processing mm-hmm. is almost mm-hmm. just like Grace Cole said, you're subconsciously working at that storyboard in yeah. your head. So by the time that you're yeah. doing this, it's already worked out. I yeah. like that. I like that. Yeah. I like that. Well, I, I love that you gave me your time today. I have enjoyed talking you. to you. Did I hit every question? Probably not. We may have to have another chat. <laughs> well, we can definitely do that. I'm not going to be so frightened next time. <laughs> I couldn't even tell that you were. I was nervous before. I was like, oh my God, I'm going to talk to about yeah, you. I have you know, the sweaty upper lip. Like, Okay. I'm so, <laughs> <laughs> so we were both in the same boat we were both yeah. in the same boat i do i enjoy what you have oh. and how you bring your story and how you present everything that that you do you know um you're you do Thank it with you. such class you do it so effortlessly and i imagine of course it takes effort to make the clothes and make you know everything that you're doing behind the scenes but you put it together yeah. in such a beautiful way and so i really do appreciate you and then to meet you and you 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 are exactly what i imagine as far as just being a beautiful person hi thank you (laughs) so very easy to talk to so i really do appreciate you this has been wonderful thank you so much let's do it again okay let's definitely most definitely most definitely so i thank you again thank you guys for joining if you have any Mm -hmm. questions or comments you can leave them down below Mm -hmm. and you can always dm either one of us Mm -hmm. and i will make sure to uh, yes brooke we love you and she looks like liz harley yes I met Liz. My husband was just talking about her not too long ago from uh, Austin Powers. I'm Austin Powers. We oh, did. We did the real Austin Powers. But I do. And of course, she's from, she's on more than just that. But yeah, I could definitely yeah. see the likeness. <laughs> <laughs> so we will do this again, guys. But I thank you, everyone who joined. I will make sure to share this particular um, video to both of our pages. Perfect. Okay. Thank you again. See you next time. Bye. (laughs) Bye bye.